how far along are you in this project? We've been helping Walter Goldstein for about three years now, but this, uh, the, the, the chloroplast symbiosis idea is very, very new. We just really just the past couple of weeks, we developed that based on some, uh, histochemistry that we did in looking at the at these leaves compared to some other commercial cultivars actually the it's really cool these other commercial cultivars the chloroplasts break down they don't have bacteria in them or if there is bacteria there's not much they don't produce nitrogen in those chloroplasts and the chloroplasts break down the plant is recycling these chloroplasts probably because it doesn't have enough nutrients but in these nitrogen fixing ones, the chloroplasts don't break down. We can actually move the bacteria from these nitrogen fixing corn types into other plants and, and get nitrogen fixation happening in these other plants and also uh, preserve the, the chloroplasts where they don't break down. So uh, the bacteria can protect the chloroplasts in, in not just corn, but other, other plants as well. And so that those are the experiments that we're that we're doing right now to kind of follow up. You could imagine there's going to be a lot of work to to actually prove that hypothesis. Oh yeah, <laughs> you could imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm working yeah. on a project similar to that. We're getting into metabarcoding, genetics, uh, metabolics, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But um, in those cultivars now, I think the ones I'm familiar with tend to grow a lot taller and throw a lot more ears. Correct? Yeah, they do. They're they're but of course, if you were making your own nitrogen, you could do that. Yeah. So are they throw in like threes, fours, and five years on the on the stocks, or even more than that. You know, I don't well, even know, Leighton. I can't tell you. It's the corn breeder who, on the other end, that the plants that we work with here are are much smaller. Uh, I'm told that these will get up to about 10 feet tall. Yeah. 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 And, and probably, probably having, having lots of ears on them. And I, I just haven't seen them there. I haven't gone to the breeding nursery, the plants that we have right now, I have some in the, some raised beds that we're working with now, but these are the ones at this stage of development are only about two feet tall, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the reason I ask this is I've been working with a farmer, Kyle Moat, um, who actually came on this podcast to talk about uh, the end results of his harvest. And he was throwing threes and fours and even a couple of fives. And, and, the, and the people around him in Illinois didn't believe him. He had all kinds of people coming. It was like a three ring circus because they'd never seen that before. Yeah. And, and Av, this is something new too. Uh, Kyle recently um, was forced to till because his uh, cover crop wasn't high enough to roll or crimp. And when he tilled, he came across hundreds and thousands of worms. One application of a biological, and now he's got soil structure. Everything is clotting. Uh, it's not. It's it's aggregated now. It's not dust. He used to pick it up and it would just fall through his fingers. So again, the, the power of, of stuff that we're unlocking right now is just insane. And James, man, this is just mind blowing that you can pull the genetic or the bacteria from one plant and introduce it to another and make that plant even stronger. Now it'll have huge ramifications on all crops. It, it really does. I mean, we could we could use these microbes or, or go from the wild plants and put them back into our crops where we lost them. You know, some plant, some crops may still have them, right? Some, like cannabis, probably still has most of its microbes. But a plant like corn, I mean, the way that we've treated corn over the years, uh, with the tissue culture and 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 lots of uh, chemistry on them, we've negated uh, a lot of the symbiosis that they that they had. That's evident. We can tell these these tissue cultured plants are. They're really, really weak plants, and uh, most of our most of our modern corn has gone through a tissue culture phase. So, we probably if if our corn ancestors ever had these nitrogen fixing symbioses, we knocked them out. We we certainly knocked them out. 
because we thought they didn't need any of that. We didn't realize <laughs> they were there, right? We thought all these microbes were just pathogens. We didn't realize that they were important to the plant. So, and we're definitely talking about a bacteria, not a fungi, correct? It's definitely bacteria. Bacteria, well, that's an interesting point. Bacteria are the only micro prokaryotes are the only microbes that are actually able to fix nitrogen. They have nitrogenous genes. Okay. But fungi will also internalize bacteria. And so you could have a fungus that has nitrogen fixing bacteria in it. And we see that actually in some fungi, we can stain with these histochemical stains for nitrate. And we can see the bacteria inside some fungal hyphae, and we can actually see nitrogen coming around the bacteria. So it's apparent that fungi are able to do a similar thing, not like rhizophagy, not exactly where there's a cycle, but they can internalize microbes and can use those bacteria uh, as sources of nutrients. But that's a whole new area, and that also has to be proven, right? I mean, I could say it and say what we see, but that's not proof yet. We need more evidence. I have a graduate student starting this fall, and uh, this graduate student is going to work on that and hopefully gather the proof that we need for that. 